Hey Ravens, welcome to this edition of o &W Now. I'm Will Chisholm alongside Blake McFarland. The sophomore committee meeting is Friday at 7.45 a.m. in room 2111. If you would like to work on the technical crew for the spring play, much ado about nothing, please sign up outside Miss Murphy's drama room. The first crew meeting will be next Tuesday, March 6th at 3.15. Any junior boys interested in spending a week learning valuable leadership skills, it's time again for Boy State. Boy State will be held June 3rd through the 9th at the K-State campus in Manhattan, Kansas. The deadline to turn in the completed application is Friday, March 30th. If you'd like any more information or would like to pick up an application, please contact Mrs. Noteboom in Student Services. Anyone interested in trying out for RFC next year needs to come to an informational meeting on Monday, March 5th at 6 p.m. in the Commons. If you can't make the meeting, please stop by Ms. Boyer's room, 2304. Let's take it to Connor and Michael for Game Day Northwest. Welcome into Game Day Northwest. I'm Connor Smith alongside Michael Thurman. It's been a busy week as spring sports started Monday and winter sports are winding down. That's right, Connor. Let's take you to the mat where last weekend senior Connor Middleton won his second consecutive state championship. This year, Middleton captured the state championship in the 160 pound weight class. Fellow Raven wrestler Brock Bowman finished fourth. Congratulations to Brock, Connor, and the rest of the wrestling team. Moving on to the Lady Ravens basketball team who defeated Leavenworth Wednesday in the sub-state semifinals by a score of 58-27. The girls will take on Gardner Edgerton tonight at 745 in Leavenworth for the sub-state championship. The winner of the games moves on to the state tournament, so be sure to get out to Leavenworth tonight for the game. The boys basketball team took on rival Olathe North last night in the sub-state semifinals. We'll send it to Bennett for a recap. Thank you, Connor and Michael. Last night, here in, at Olathe Northwest, the Ravens boys basketball team played a stellar game versus our rivals, Olathe North. The Ravens started off the game with a 7-0 run, and with defensive plays by Willie Colley, went into halftime up 30-17. In the second half, senior Siobhan Shields led the team with 29 points, with the final score being 71-39. The Ravens will play this Saturday versus Olathe East at 5.30 in Leavenworth. Come out and support the Ravens. I'm Bennett Hofer, back to the desk. The team will play tomorrow at Leavenworth at 5.30 against the winner of Lawrence and Olathe East for the sub-state championship. And a chance to move on to the state tournament. Yesterday at state bowling, Raven bowler Jacob O'Kane finished 29th, bowling a 2.17 and a 2.13 in his first two rounds. Congratulations to Jacob and the rest of the bowling team. Now on to spring sports. Tryouts concluded this week and the teams will begin practice in the next few days. Next week's episode will provide rosters and season previews. Well, that's all we have for this week. Alongside Connor Smith, I'm Michael Thurman. Guys. Leap years only happen once every four years, which means some people only celebrate their birthday once every four years. Most kids in high school fall between the ages 14 through 19, but on Wednesday, February 29th, O&W's very own Wyatt McCall is turning four. Um, I celebrate my birthday every four years, so um, my parents will like take the money from all of the potential birth birthdays that I've had and um, like put them into the one birthday that I have every four years. We'll have like a big party. So this year we're like going paintballing and a bunch of family members are coming into town. So it's fun. So what's it like being a four year old in high school? You get like a whole bunch of Wiggles cards for your birthday. Like you'll get like stuff. Like one year I got, I think it was like eight Barney cards and like six Wiggles cards. You sometimes you wish like, can I have a car please? I have one little brother. 
he'll joke with me. He's like, I'm older than you, and I'm so much more mature than you. And I'm like, you know, I'm in high school. Being the only student at ONW with a leap year birthday isn't the only thing that makes Wyatt unique. He's also a very involved student. Uh, I'm in e-com. I'm, I'm in theater, and I'm in choir. So what does Wyatt want for his birthday? Birthday presents would be nice. Other than Wiggles cards. What an amazing Raven. Be sure to wish Wyatt a happy fourth birthday. For the Raven Daily, this has been Lexi Thomas and Caitlin Larson. Show your Raven pride by putting on one of the all-new Raven pride decals on your car. Project Grab will be selling the decals at both basketball tournament games this week and then again all next week during the lunch periods. They are just $5 each. If you ever want to find out whom you're compatible with, buy your matchmaker results for $2 next week at lunch. Now let's take it to Connor and Michael for this week's edition of App of the Week. App of the Week coming back at you, new app, new week, and we're ready to go this week. That's right, we're pumped coming back at you right here. Classic Game Pictionary now coming through the App Store. And your artistic ability better be on its A game, because this week's app is Drawing Something. Draw Something is a simple and fun new game available in the iTunes App Store as well as the Android market. Draw Something allows you to play against friends online through Facebook and Twitter, as well as play against random opponents. At the beginning of each turn, you get three subjects to choose from, varying in difficulty. Then the person you're playing against will receive the drawing and a group of letters and have to guess the word that you have drawn. The harder the word, the more coins it is worth. Well, that's all we've got for this edition of App of the Week. I'm your guest host, Tanner Music. For Michael Thurman and Connor Smith, we'll see you next week. There are many changes happening in the library. Let's take it to Leslie to find out more. Many changes have occurred at the O&W Library. Books are out of place, and many of the shelves are empty. The old Dewey Decimal System is gone, and in its place is a brand new system. A lot of people ask about the Dewey Decimal System, mm -hmm. and if that's why we're doing it. And then people always say, I never understood the Dewey Decimal System. Well, yeah. fiction really is not part of the Dewey Decimal System. If it was, it'd be inside the Dewey Decimal System in the 800s for literature. People are used to the Barnes & Noble yeah. borders when it existed, and they would go straight to those areas. Yeah. So I thought, well, we'll do this. And I talked to Dr. Poss about it, and I said, this will be a really, it'll take a long time to do this because we have 8,761 fiction books yeah. and we're going to touch every one of them and she was all on board for this. Instead of the fiction section being shelved by the Dewey Decimal System, it will now be organized by genres. This will make the process of finding a good book to read much easier. We did mysteries first because it seemed like it would be the easiest and was a pretty big section, which yeah. is a pretty big section front and back, yeah. and then adventure, uh -huh. uh, fantasy and sci-fi. Mm -hmm. Um, thinking thriller, which is kind of the horror books, but we called it thriller because it has the vampire and the zombies in it too. Yeah. And romance, sports, and western. I think it's really cool. I I like how you can just like think about what kind of book you want to read and just go to that, and you don't have to like any specific author. And I think it's also cool because like all the girls will go to the romance, all the guys will go to the thrillers, that sports section, and. Well, it just makes it really easy to find books so you don't have to spend all the time like looking on a computer. So that's the whole reason I did it. Yeah. To get books to walk out of this library yeah. and get read and people to come in and find an area. This has been Leslie Lindsay. Back to you guys at the desk. A new documentary about students being pressured to overachieve by their parents has sent shockwaves to the Aletha community. Cameron Keatsman has more. I can't really remember the last time I had a chance to go in the backyard and just run around. School's just so much pressure that every day I'd wake up dreading it. I'm afraid that our children are going to sue us for stealing their childhoods. Race to Nowhere is a full-length documentary-type film about the stress teenagers are facing nowadays based on their classes, their activities, and their extreme pressure to be perfect by teachers, parents, and their friends. You're dedicating your whole life to your grades. You have to be smart and you have to be involved in the arts. I have soccer practice every day, plus the homework on top of that. Produce, produce, produce. It's impossible. I couldn't cope. 
Monday night at Olathe East, Race to Nowhere was screened for students, parents, and anyone interested. The film viewing was sponsored by the Kansas Families for Education Foundation and Brogdon Buick GMC. Bert Brogdon, a former student at Olathe Northwest, decided to speak at the panel discussion after the movie and gives current students advice to keep up the good work. Yeah, um, focus on you know what makes you happy. Um, that's really the biggest thing when you're when you're trying you know when you're buried under a ton of math or science homework or whatever it is that you you know hate doing. You know you have to make time. You have to you have to create that and you have to make it happen whether it seems like it fits into your schedule or not. ONW principal Dr. Gwen Poss attended the event and viewed the film for the third time. I think every time um, I gather a little bit more perspective, I thought the panel did a really great job of um, really uh, summarizing that it's really more of a conversation that everyone needs to have about um, our families and how involved um, our kids are, the choices that we make. For ONW Now, this has been Cameron Keatsman. For the latest stories and updates, visit the Raven Daily at ownwravens.net slash ravendaily. For Blake McFarland, I'm Will Chisholm. We're going to leave you with a music video from Bruce and Michael. Dunk, dunk city. Dunk, 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 dunk city. Dunk, dunk, dunk city, son. Dunk. Bruce on that beat. Dunk city, son. Dunk, dunk city, son. Dunk city, son. Dunk, dunk city, son. Dunk city, son. Dunk, dunk city, son. Want to see him fly? Lob the ball at 3-1. Dunk city sun, dunk dunk city sun, dunk city sun, dunk dunk city sun, dunk city sun, dunk dunk city sun. Yeah, sky high, Willie Cully seven one. <laughs> and don't forget D Reed or hand it off the tray if you're looking for the three. If you're looking for the two, then we'll send it off the zoo. Or maybe for now, handle sicker than the flu. Was that just a dunk? Someone called the scouters. No one is as high as my boy Sam Power. <laughs> and you know we got Graham. He's going for the slam, jamming with two hands. Yeah, and Marcus, you're. A heck of a guy and you're looking mighty fly with rec specs on your eyes and i ain't gonna lie when he's down low or high colton gets the job done he won't be denied oh wow look at the crowd raven raven nation screaming so loud the black and blue crew yeah we're coming after you it's not south not east no it's o and double you dunk city sun dunk dunk city sun dunk city sun dunk dunk city sun dunk city sun dunk dunk city sun wanna see him fly loud of all the three one dunk city sun dunk dunk city Dunk city sun, dunk city sun, dunk dunk city sun, dunk city sun, dunk dunk city sun. Yeah, sky high, Willie Cully seven. Rah. Dunk city, yeah, we always flying high. Northwest Raven Pride or Die. Willie Cully got the rock in his hands. You know he's throwing down in front of the fans. Siobhan Shields just give him the ball. Taking off from the free throw, John Wall. Graham Dobbins swatting your stuff. I think you really have had enough down from Jimmer Town. Trey Bales, he's always dropping dimes, but no sales. Northwest Lupe Flow, just beaming. Think you're gonna beat us? Keep dreaming. Yeah. Dunk city, a dunk city, dunk city, dunk, dunk city, son.